Um, thank you everyone for, for coming to this, these closing remarks. And without further ado, um, I will now call on the delegation from China to please make their closing remarks. Thank you. The Chinese delegation was extremely successful this weekend. The Committee on the South China Sea successfully came up with a proposal that will help begin high level US China discussions towards developing a roadmap for diplomacy. The countries will work together to amend um, UN close and develop favorable trade relationships. China will work together on a number of environmental projects, provide freedom of navigation in exchange for the United States retreat from the region in, in the next three to five years. The Committee on Taiwan has agreed that China's militarization levels in the Taiwan Strait will stay consistent with the present, with the present moment, and the international community acknowledges the one China policy and condemns growing movements in Taiwan for independence. As part of the Human Rights Committee, China voted for a resolution in support of a state's ability to deal with its domestic affairs without international interference. The UN Human Rights Council, of which China is an important member, must vote with a supermajority before a country's human rights issues can be brought up in the General Assembly. We are satisfied with the arrangement as it allows us to maintain sovereignty over our internal issues. China has agreed to regulate North Korea's existing nuclear weapons, expanding our influence on the Korean Peninsula and limiting non-Asian interference. Furthermore, we will be the main facilitator in reunifying North and South Korea and leading to complete denuclearization of North Korea. In this way, China will be a key player in maintaining peace and nonviolence on the peninsula while continuing to be economically prosperous. The China delegation has worked with several nations to continue agreements that will facilitate the continued effectiveness of the Belt and Road Initiative. Namely, we will continue to put forth efforts to reduce carbon emissions within the Belt and Road Initiative by prioritizing the development of cheaper green energy. And we have pledged support for the Eurasia Initiative a system of rail, railroad lines spanning Europe and Asia that would ease transportation of goods and people. China was able to help the East Asian region by spearheading a rapid and long-term response initi initiative to make vaccines manufactured in China readily available. Along with the other countries in this agreement, we have decided to set up a research and prevention committee of medical professionals representing each country. China is willing to help countries promote economic stability by in increasing trade relations and the Belt and Road Initiative, which in turn will allow East Asian nations to turn their focus more towards sustainability. China will continue following our promises regarding the Paris Agreement in curbing greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and increasing renewable energy sourcing by 20%. Our committee's proposal promotes free trade with minimal interference beyond those against protectionism. Climate change, while important, should not be dealt with through trade agreements, and our committee believes that technology falls into three different categories as it relates to its sharing across borders. Technological sharing that should be actively encouraged, technology that should not be overtly monitored so as not to impede international trade, and technology sharing that should be discouraged. Our committee voted to sanction countries guilty of human rights violations, and a trade deal was organized by foreign countries with Taiwan against China. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Um, I will now call on the delegation from Japan to make their closing remarks. Fellow delegations, thank you Tufts University and fellow delegations for creating and nurturing spaces for our nations to come together to discuss the very significant issue of China as a regional and global influence. Within our respected committees, over the course of the past two days, we had the pleasure of engaging in rich and meaningful dialogue with fellow delegates. Um, the Committee on the South China Sea all came to the agreement that allows access to resources in the South China Sea, along with a strategic view towards developing a roadmap for diplomacy and willingness to present details of positions on issues in the South China Sea. We are all working towards abiding the, by the laws of the United Nations Convention of the Law of Sea by adding amendments. The Committee on the Korean Peninsula all came to an agreement and understanding on the path we should all take towards denuclearization of North Korea, which is very interesting to witness and be a part of. We thank every single bright young student and facilitator who joined in. The Committee on Taiwan agrees with the resolutions of allowing Taiwan to be an observer in the World Health Organization. Japan will not support Taiwan in a future act of independence respecting the agreement of the One China Policy. The Committee on Climate Change, Health, and Global Resilience 
has discussed his important role in the causes and contributions to climate change and COVID-19, as well as agreed that the significant role for China is to export and manufacture vaccines for two years, along with collaborating with other nations to resolve climate issues. The Committee on Trade and Technology has come to an agreement with the United States, the EU, and Japan has, has to a free trade agreement with Taiwan. The Committee on Development has discussed and made resolutions to topics pertaining to the development and aid of smaller nations and improvements we can make to better the environment. The Committee on Human Rights contributed to a resolution that passed for human rights to sign on to an international statement that renews commitment to promotion of democratic ideals. Thank you very much for your remarks. I will now call on the delegation from North Korea to make their closing remarks. North Korea would like to thank Tufts University and our fellow delegates for making this experience possible. North Korea previously established that other nations will relieve us of our economic sanctions, especially our trade sanctions, to bolster the economy. And in return, we must halt the production of our nuclear arsenal and allow China to regulate the use and testing of such weapons. North Korea, ha North Korea has not entirely come to a conclusion on the establishment of trade and human humanitarian aid within the committee, but North Korea is also entirely willing to begin partial denuclearization to receive economic or humanitarian aid in, and in return, but we solely believe that denuclearization will take place at the reunification of the Koreas and will com complete sovereignty in the area, assuming that the US, that, that the US political and militaristic extent is removed. North Korea was happy with the resolutions of the Taiwan conflict. North Korea was in support of China for easing tension in the Taiwan Strait and was in support with China for not allowing Taiwan to gain independence. North Korea was not able to get any benefits from the resolutions. Since China and the U.S. weren't on the same terms of who will be spearheading the vaccine rollout, we decided to let China temporarily spearhead the distribution for two years. North Korea agrees with China and will let them spearhead slash organize the vaccine rollout because China is willing to lend North Korea resources and supplies to support our lack of medical supplies and a kind, and kind of broken health care system. We're kind of disappointed with Russia for not engaging with the discussion much and U.S. for being stubborn and not letting China spearhead out the rollout, even though they made so many contributions towards the pandemic already. We have decided the best course of action is to give the Aishan power and permission to distribute land, regulate rules, and prevent future disputes. This resolution works well for us as well as North Korea. We are very pleased with the outcome of the meetings. We agreed that the Eurasia plan, where we would have to where 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 we would have a railroad system going through North Korea, South Korea, as well as other countries, which would cheapen the cost of imports and North Korean workers will be building these roads, thus mitigating unemployment. North Korea was disappointed that the U.S. would try to condemn China for the way they handled the student protests in Hong Kong, considering that they had many protests in the summer and throughout the year that they met with violence and did not approach in a logical manner like they expect China to do. We introduced the idea of a new international human rights law that allows annual inspections by independent agents in countries around the globe that do not comply with the UN standards for human rights. We are still to see if they will be taking the offer or what more they will have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for your remarks. That's surely, surely a historic moment for North Korea. Um, I will now call on the delegation from South Korea to make their closing remarks. Thank you, and thank you, Tuss, for uh, hosting us this weekend. Overall, it was a very successful weekend for the delegation of South Korea. As we were able to engage in meaningful debate and pass legislation, not only to strengthen our ties with other countries, but advance our own interests. In the Committee of Trade and Technology, we established a set of guidelines for bilateral trade agreements, specifically stating that the World Trade Organization should act entirely as an observer party intervening only if protectionism is employed. Additionally, we encourage the diversification of supply chains um, toward developing countries as a, uh, as a general practice. And we also established um, recommendations for the sharing of technology, specifically in the areas of climate change, 
medical technology. Um, and that, that will greatly benefit our country as we have been working hard, especially in climate change to develop new technologies um, and share them with our partners in the region and across the globe. And finally, we established that we would also like to encourage the sharing of military technology. And in the future, we are open to forming agreements and bilateral agreement with the United States to work more closely with them as well, um, to share military technology with them. Although we were not able to complete a formal agreement in the allotted time. And South Korea is also happy with the progress made at the conference with regard to the South China Sea. We were able to gain a consensus that complete freedom of trade and navigation in the South China Sea be upheld, which greatly benefits our economy and preserving peace in the region. Additionally, in our proposal, a, a plan for a 25 mile nautical mile corridor in the middle of the South China Sea was recommended. And while it did not pass, we are confident that about its potential in the future as it promotes trade and energy flows while alleviating tensions. Furthermore, there was an agreement for the US to reduce their military presence in the South China Sea. And this does benefit Korea by easing regional tensions, but we still do not want to lose the US as an ally or as a leader in peacemaking and, North, and in North Korean denuclearization. So we believe that in the future, the proposal developed lays out a clear path for collaboration with the signatory nations if problems arise with the, slightest, with the slightly diminished US presence. This, this maintains all the invested parties' interests. Finally, in exchange for China receiving direct access to the energy resources in the South China Sea, they've ensured a stable and constant supply of energy and trade with South Korea, which is imperative for our further development. In the future, we would like to see ASEAN used more as an economic institution rather than to solve territorial disputes. And we would also like to continue our robust trade relationship with China, while also keeping a close diplomatic relationship with the US, which we feel that after today is achievable. Thanks. The Committee on the Korean Peninsula achieved some level of success for South Korea as well. We concluded that we will have triannual discussions with an end goal of complete denuclear denuclearization and the reun reunification of a sovereign Korea free of foreign interference. In order to establish these discussions, North Korea will cooperate by halting all production of nuclear weapons and requiring approval from China to do any testing. To facilitate this step, the United States, South Korea, Russia, and Japan will partially lift sanctions. These talks will be hosted in Beijing and the involved parties will be the People's Republic of China, North Korea, South Korea, Japan, Russia, and the United States. If North Korea fails to cooperate, the United States and South Korea will reinstate sanctions. In the future, we hope to see a completely denuclearized North Korea, perhaps by giving them humanitarian aid and economic aid in return. As for trade and humanitarian aid, we will not be providing aid to North Korea until they begin the process of denuclearization. We would like to see a future in which we have trade relations with North Korea. However, it cannot be achieved unless the North Korean economy is independent. As of now, our economy is one of the strongest there and there is little that North Korea produces that could compete in our market. Our assistance in financing North Korea is dependent on their denuclearization, however. We hope that we will see a Korean reunification down the road. The South Korean Committee on Climate Change, Global Health and Resilience feels happy some solutions were also able to be made during this committee. While the ideal situation for an East Asian rapid response team would have allowed all countries to have equal power and say, we understand why China is leading the effort and thank them for their economic support. We feel that the board of scientists that transcend national boundaries and our plans for transparency and information sharing will leave East Asia drastically more prepared to deal with the onset of another pandemic and are glad our committee was able to come up with such a thorough plan. When looking at the issue of climate change, South Korea is happy that each of our countries decided that with so many different factors, it is unreasonable to set the exact same goals and guidelines. We will be using a common but differentiated responsibilities approach for climate change. We look forward to a greener future with guidelines South Korea will set for itself that do not infringe upon its economic growth as a nation. Unfortunately, the committee did not have enough time to discuss the question of what factors are most important when looking at a country's resilience, which South Korea was looking forward to investigating. Had we had the chance to discuss this issue, South Korea would have presented that we feel that economic prosperity, political stability or risk, and popula population density and education are vital. However, overall, the South Korean Committee on Climate Change, Global Health and Resilience is happy with what we have accomplished this weekend. In the Taiwan Committee, we voted for demilitarization de over time and to de-escalate um, the region. And 
while South Korea is glad that peace has been achieved, we're worried about Taiwan still because we didn't really reach a conclusion. And we're also worried about the security threats that China poses to South Korea as they increase in the gain power in the region. And we did all vote on a resolution to add Taiwan to the World Health Organization, which I think will be very beneficial, especially in the time of COVID. And so that is very beneficial to South Korea. And we're really glad we accomplished that. And we also wish that the United States would have taken a stronger or more complete stance throughout these debates. But throughout the rest of negotiations, we think we accomplished a lot this weekend. And we look forward to maintaining peace in the region while acting in a way that doesn't upset the United States or China. And finally, on the Committee of Development, the delegation of South Korea was able to further our main economic and developmental goals in two notable areas. First is the establishment and advancement with the support of China, the EU, UK, and North Korea of our Eurasia initiative, which is the transport system spanning across to Europe and Asia, including a trans-Korean railway. This project would ensure cheaper export costs and greater market access in the future, paving the way for our increased trade and economic collaboration with those two regions and a potential reunification with North Korea. Additionally, through proposing a clause to the Committee of Development on prioritizing the innovation of gr cheap green energy technology, which South Korea has already had a jump start in creating, it gives us access to the previously untapped ASEAN market, which long-term would bolster our energy tech field and decrease our dependence on China in that area. Thank you very much for your remarks. I will now call on the delegation from Taiwan to make their closing remarks. Hello delegates, the representatives from Taiwan would like to sincerely thank you for the time and effort you have put into our discussions for the past few days. We have been heartened by the willingness to compromise and the empathy that has been shown to our state of Taiwan. We are satisfied by the outcomes of these talks and excited about the future of diplomatic relations between Taiwan and the countries present today. The South China Sea Committee created a proposal in which China agreed to unclose and the US will slowly pull the military out of the region. It is however with a heavy heart that Taiwan would like to express its disappointment with the United States and their lack of cooperation with us in the region and the concurrence of other nations to exclude Taiwan from resolutions. In the committee from the, for the Korean Peninsula, we establish a plan for the denuclearization of North Korea. We have been, part, we have been a part of, the revi of a revival of discussions regarding both denuclearization and reunification of the Korean Peninsula. We reached, we, we reached various agreements regarding the halting of nuclear production and the consequences if that did not occur. We reached agreements regarding economic and humanitarian aid to the peninsula as well. However, we wish we could have seen a greater effort by North Korea for, dis for nuclear disarmament. We hope that these resolutions will create a safer Asia in the future. In the Committee on Taiwan, we were able to officially join the World Health Organization with the support of all, the, all of the delegations present today. We are extremely grateful that the international community has recognized our advanced healthcare system and our outstanding response to the COVID-19 pandemic and are excited about the future of this partnership. We were also able to reach an agreement to halt increases in militarization across the Taiwan Strait with a promise by the United States, the European Union slash United Kingdom in Japan to place sanctions on China if they violate this agreement by increasing military action in the future. We are saddened to see the condemnation of our growing independence movement by some international countries, as this clearly curtails the security of democracy worldwide and suppresses our people's political thoughts and feelings. In the Committee on Trade and Technology, we were able to come to an agreement on the necessity of economic sanctions on countries um, that are committing mass human rights atrocities. In order to compensate for our losses as a result of these sanctions, we were able to form an agreement between the US, EU, UK, and Japan to aid us through a trade deal and to agree to military support if China does anything aggressive. We also were able to reach agreements regarding the World Trade Organization's role, as well as agreements on sharing various technologies between international partners. In the Development Committee, we passed laws requiring China to create a team to analyze the climate effects from the BRI and encouraged everyone to um, to use cheaper green energy. We also passed rules on standardizing climate policies and support the Eurasia Initiative to promote trade from Europe to Asia. 
and the Governance and Human Rights Committee, Taiwan affirmed its right to be a safe haven for nonviolent protesters by successfully passing an international resolution to ensure a government's ability to choose to provide refuge for non-protesters seeking safety. We also ensure that international interference would be required if a country reached the point of, of violations of human rights decided by the United Nations based on the Universal De Declaration of Human Rights. Furthermore, we passed a resolution to promote democratic ideals worldwide. We are hopeful for the progress these resolutions will bring on an international scale. The Climate Change and Global Health Committee works to create an East Asian pandemic rapid response team composed of medical professionals. All East Asian countries are represented equally in this coalition and vaccine distribution is determined by this international council. We also helped to create a plan for an East Asian climate change response in which we agreed to share our smart farming expertise and extreme weather monitoring systems. In closing, we feel that these talks have been extremely productive for Taiwan. We are grateful for the various trade agreements we, we have come to, the international organizations we have been accepted to, and the social progress we have made. We have made great strides in the recognition of our sovereignty by the global community. We thank you all for the time you've taken the past two days to create these meaningful solutions and look forward to future relations between our states. Thank you very much for your remarks. Another historic moment, I would say. I will now call on the delegation from the United States to make their closing remarks. Thank you. The United States Committee on Development was very pleased with the recommendations agreed upon by our group. We achieved our main goals of placing a check on Chinese BRI intentions and protecting the sovereignty of the developing countries that are affected by it. We were pleased that China accepted our recommendation of a five-year debt relief plan in developing BRI countries with intensified economic stress because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Committee on the South China Sea created a 13-step proposal in which we will slowly give up our military presence in the South China Sea and ratify UN CLOSE so that it fits our agenda and the agenda of China. The Committee on Ch Taiwan achieved our goal of staying relatively neutral in the disputes between China and Taiwan. We also helped a resolution pass that stops the military presence in the Taiwan Strait from increasing and a resolution that gives Taiwan a presence in WHO. We abstained from voting on condemning independence movements in Taiwan, though the resolution was unfortunately still passed. The Committee on Climate Change, Health and Resilience created a plan for the distribution and manufacturing of vaccines that involves a team of representatives from each country to give recommendations for action based on scientific research. China will spearhead the distribution temporarily for a period of two years. While we would prefer no country have more control than others, as long as each country has equal say on the decision-making of plans, the U.S. agrees with this plan and is willing to contribute as necessary. The Committee on the Korean Peninsula was pleased with some of the past recommendations. We are happy that North Korea agreed to partially denuclearize after we lifted a few of our sanctions on their country. We are frustrated that North Korea refused to fully denuclearize. We would have been able to give humanitarian aid if they had done so. We enjoyed discussions about the reunification of the Korean Peninsula and hope to see unified Korea under the ROK in the future. The Committee on Human Rights is disheartened by the international lack of concern for human rights. Lack of flexibility and willingness to work together was disheartening. The Chinese government has been hostile and threatening, so we feel that the only way forward is through legal action. The US would like to submit a case against China in the International Court of Justice. China has broken its promise to Hong Kong, 50 years of autonomy before total reabsorption into China and repeatedly denied the genocide of Uyghur Muslims. We want to work with China, but not until these issues are addressed. Finally, after many hours of thorough deliberation, the United States Committee on Trade and Technology ultimately decided not to sign the drafted legislature. Although included were many laws that will benefit the future of commerce in Eastern Asia and the region's commitment, commitment to preserving our planet, there were certain aspects of the legislature that demanded we share our military technology in order to even the playing field. We could not in good faith sign onto a law that demanded we give up our military advantages. The United States thanks everyone for participating and collaborating with us. Thank you very much for your remarks. I will now call on the delegation from Vietnam to make their closing remarks. The, de the delegation of Vietnam is enthusiastic to share all that we have accomplished during this conference. 
the South China Sea Committee formed an agreement for U.S.-China talks to take place about presenting the details of its claims and positions with respect to military activities and maritime and territorial claims. There, they also planned to ratify the 1982 U.N. close with all East Asian nations involved. There was also the establishment of a joint U.S.-Asia ASEAN Survey of Environmental Health of the South China Sea and the sponsorship of a project for plastic removal. Here, how free trade and navigation in the region will economically benefit Vietnam and ensure the safety of our people was discussed as well. In the Taiwan Committee, as per Vietnam's suggestion, Taiwan will have a state seat in the WHO as a reward for their pandemic response. The committee also kept in line with Vietnam's point of view and de declined to recognize it as an independent country. The Korean Peninsula Committee agreed to triannual discussions with an end goal of complete denuclearization and the reunification of a sovereign Korea free of foreign interference. Vietnam also agreed to provide North Korea with economic aid as opposed to humanitarian aid in an effort to bolster the nation's economy. As for human rights, Vietnam collaborated with both Asian nations and the EU to pass a resolution in support of a state's ability to deal with its domestic affairs without international interference. The agreement would also open, open, would also open conversations with the UN Human Rights Council and the greater international community, something the Vietnam already has experience with. The Committee on Development further diversified economic ties by leading the formation of an agreement between Japan, South Korea, the EU, and ASEAN nations for increased investment. The Committee on Development also proposed and passed a written agreement with leaders of nations implementing BRI projects that, com that combating climate change and mitigating fossil fuels emissions will be a priority and established annual talk talks regarding progress with the BRI in relation to green energy cl and climate change to in ensure that efforts are, are continued. The C Committee on Climate Change, Health and Resilience advocated to form a rapid regional response team in East Asia that will focus on organizing vaccine distribution and setting up meetings between party states while keeping in mind every nation right to purchase or sell vaccines from other nations. We are happy that this was approved and think that it will be extremely beneficial. We also formed an East Asian pandemic prevention team, which would be composed of scientists of each nation who would monitor threats to public health and present recommendations to prevent future outbreaks. We also discussed a variety of methods to best help East Asia approach sustainability by 2060. The Committee on Trade and Technology um, discussed uh, no, found that the World Trade Organization will act entirely as an observer party and intervene only when protectionism is employed, promoting free trade. They also encouraged the diversification of supply chains towards LDCs, which will bring more trade into Vietnam. In a bilateral agreement between the U.S. and Vietnam, the U.S. Department of Commerce will send more trade representatives to Vietnam and increase technology transfer between these country, two countries. Lastly, Vietnam has gained, gained critical military technology, including nuclear weapons, with the goal of defending and maintaining our security. Thank you, Tufts University, for allowing us to participate in this conference, and thank you, Ms. Markovitz, for teaching and mentoring us throughout this year. We have all gained immensely from your class, and we are honored to be your final Tufts class. Thank you very much for your remarks. Um, I will now call on the delegation from Russia to make their closing remarks. Thank you. The nation of Russia has heard and considered all of your arguments and suggestions towards our different areas. The Committee on the Korean Peninsula recognizes the requirements which have been set out for North Korea on nuclear development, as well as humanitarian and trading issues. We are pleased with the outcomes as we move towards our ultimate goal of denuclearization. As a recap, we will be providing some economic aid towards North Korea, as long as the conditions that were established are met. We commend the four nations, the US, North and South Korea, and China, for their fruitful communication, cooperation, and compromisation. We are glad to have come to an agreement on the issue of the Belt and Road Initiative and the proposal on the clean energy made by all the delegates. We are also happy to have a response team for the current COVID-19 pandemic and any future ones that arise. Although we made great efforts to tackle climate change, we hope to meet again and make new policies that will allow us to have economic sustainability while also fighting climate change. We would like to thank Tufts University and the other delegates for this amazing opportunity. Thank you very much for your remarks. And for our final remarks, I'll call on the delegation from the EU and the UK to make their closing remarks. Coming into this conference, we wanted to spread the democratic ideals that we as the joint delegation from the European Union and the United Kingdom view as important. We also wish to promote free trade, 
peaceful negotiations, and the de-escalation of dangerous conflicts. In addition, we hope to strengthen our ties with other delegations through an open discussion on many topics. In the Human Rights Committee, we passed a resolution that would allow the world to have some oversight of China on human rights issues. We also have agreed to sign a statement regarding the promotion of democratic ideals around the world. In the Committee on Taiwan, we passed a resolution stipulating that both China and Taiwan cannot increase their military presence. We also agree that Taiwan would join the World Health Organization as an observer state under China, allowing them to share important health information with the world. In the Committee on the South China Sea, we were able to come to an agreement that allowed for safe navigation and environmental protection in the South China Sea. Uh, although we were not able to come to an agreement over territorial claims, we are pleased to be able to make sure that the re region remains peaceful as we continue to discuss this issue. We also made strides towards forming international resolutions regarding trade and technology. We successfully passed resolutions to regulate trade by allowing intervention of, of, from the World Trade Organization, which will largely remain an observer party only in cases of protectionism. In addition, we resolved to diversify supply chains and we formed an agreement with the United States, Japan, and Taiwan to levy sanctions against countries for, for human rights violations, should Taiwan be compensated economically by the other nations, which allowed us to further progress in protecting human rights. Finally, we resolved uh, to protect, protect intellectual property rights and patents of independent companies to further innovate uh, to further innovation and entrepreneurship. Our development team made significant and beneficial agreements with the countries in our committee, passing three proposals, including the collaboration with China on BRI projects supporting the incorporation of workers from developing countries and favoring the Eurasia Initiative, continue to invest uh, in de developing countries and maintain economic ties. And finally, the establishment of a record that entails the steps that are taken by the BRI to combat, combat climate change on an annual basis. In the C Committee on Climate Change, Health and Resilience, we were able to create a two-tier response plan that allowed for the most efficient and effective prevention and mitigation of future pandemics in an equitable and peaceful way. We were also focused on implementing laws that will reduce carbon emissions and increase our use of renewable energy to become a net neutralist by the year 2050. We are happy to have made a lot of progress and enjoyed being able to work with other countries to compromise and create solutions for pressing world issues. We hope to be able to work with everyone again in the future and get a chance at further dialogue. Thank you. Thank you delegates for all of your remarks. Um, it was very insightful discussions over the past two days, and I will now invite my classmate Frankie Mitchell to make the closing remarks on behalf of the Institute for Global, Global Leadership. Thank you, Colin, um, and thank you everyone for your closing remarks. Um, esteemed delegates, my name is Frankie Michelli, and I'm a junior here at Tufts and a member of this year's EPIC class. On behalf of the EPIC Colloquium, Inquiry Committee, and the Institute for Global Leadership, I'd like to thank you for and congratulate you on your participation in this year's inquiry simulation. The sleeping giant has awoken China as a regional and global influence. The past three days have featured lively and impassioned debate around a variety of issues related to China, diplomacy and cooperation. China's significant rise on the international stage has shifted the balance of power, raising fundamental questions about the nature of the contemporary global order. Each committee tackled some of these complex questions discussed possible resolutions and developed frameworks, guidelines, and plans for engagement and cooperation in the future. We hope that by examining the South China Sea, global resilience, the Korean Peninsula, human rights, development, Taiwan, and trade and technology, you have gained a deeper understanding of China's role in the world. And we are inspired by the depth of your knowledge and the breadth of perspectives and experiences you brought to the table. As a recognition of your achievements over this weekend, we will be sending each of you a certificate of completion. Um, lastly, we would like to thank Professor Abby Williams, the director of the IGL, Heather Berry, and the rest of the IGL staff for their invaluable work in organizing this conference. Um, we would like to thank your teachers and faculty for working with us throughout this year. Um, and lastly, we'd like to thank you for your active participation this weekend. It has been our absolute pleasure working with you. Um, 
So that is all we have. We really hope that you enjoyed the simulation um, and have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for your great work.